So today I'm going to talk a little about that. And uh, well, actually, this is a clickbait. I'm mostly going to be talking about the uh, open badges specification and then uh, at the end, a little about uh, how the migration is going on. So yeah, let's uh, uh, let's start with the specification. So this was uh, this open badge uh, specification was initially developed by Mozilla Foundation, and this was done to fuel uh, individual motiv uh, to fuel individual motivation, so people can feel rewarded for doing tasks that they do on their own, and they don't have to feel pressure to follow. Uh, uh, to pursue with deg degrees and formal educations. And uh, so, yeah, Mozilla launched uh, the, the first version uh, of Open Badges in 2012. And by 2013, it was already uh, very popular and over 1,500 organizations uh, were issuing Open Badges. Uh, by 2014, um, uh, Mozilla had launched Badge Alliance which was uh, a group of uh, org organizations, companies uh, that wanted to further develop the open badges specification. This was later handed over to Collective Shift and Collective Shift uh, partnered with Concentric Sky to develop open badges 1.0, sorry, open badges 2.0, the slide is wrong. And uh, yeah, so, uh, Today, uh, so the application Badger is the one uh, is actually developed by Concentric Sky, and uh, uh, Mozilla has also uh, migrated to Badger, and so is Fedora gonna migrate to. So yeah, let's talk about the specs. So I'm gonna talk uh, a little about the data structures that the uh, badges, uh, Open Badges uses, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean I I won't talk about everything but uh, hopefully I've kept uh, stuff that is interesting. So uh, Open Badges uh, uses JSON-LD to, uh, to define the structures that are needed to issue a badge. And uh, if you have heard of J, uh, you might be familiar with JSON-LD because uh, this is something that uh, we use in search engine, engine optimization. And most of the search engines, except maybe being officially uh, recognize JSON-LD as a way to structure the data in on the web. So yeah, uh, so this is quite popular and uh, so that's why the specification chose this uh, to define open badge specification. So uh, all you got to do with for, J, uh, uh, for JSON uh, to use JSON-LD is uh, declare a add context and uh, defer, Give give it a link to where the uh, badge the specification is hosted, and then you can use type wherever you want to uh, and refer to all the definitions inside the, the inside the definition file that you have hosted. So, for example, this is what a assertion would look like uh, with. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, on top you can see that uh, there's context. Uh, Given, the context link is given and the ID, uh, which uh, is the unique identifier for the assertion. And yeah, all the metadata related to it. You can see that the structure is nested, so you can actually nest structures in uh, JSON-LD. That's one of the benefits of using JSON-LD, other than that uh, you can also uh, use other languages. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it about JSON-LD. So let's talk of, about a few of the data structures that uh, uh, that Open Badges uses. So an assertion is uh, it's it's basically the badge that it's an instance of a badge that you give to someone. So the the fields that are in bold that are the ones that are required, and then the rest uh, they're optional. So the required ones are obviously ID type, recipient, badge, uh, verification. Verification is something that uh, defines how the badge must be verified. There are two types of verification, which I'll talk about later. And then uh, issued on the, is the date time uh, on which the badge was issued. So yeah, uh, that's it about this, I guess. So yeah, uh, in this you have you might have noticed that there's a 
uh, expected type of batch class. So that's what we'll talk about next. So a batch class is uh, is the class that you that you'll use to uh, that that basically holds the metadata for the badge itself, and then uh, you uh, the application is supposed to make instances of that batch class and give it out to the recipients that uh, you mention. So uh, in a batch class, uh, the required types uh, the required fields are ID, type, name, description, image, criteria, and issuer. I think most of them are self-explanatory. Uh, the criteria is uh, the uh, text for uh, uh, how you achieve the, how do you get that badge? And then the issuer is the organization organization that is issuing the badge. So yeah, and the rest is yeah pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. So next uh, we talk about profile. So a profile can be uh, either an issuer or the user itself. So as I said an issuer is the organization that uh, will give the badge to someone and uh, yeah so you gotta uh, uh, both of them both issuer and a normal user come from the same data structure which is profile except that uh, if, if you are an issuer you you'll have some extra required fields that you need to uh, have so for a normal user you just need to have id and type and the rest is optional but for uh, issuer, you'll also need to have URL, email, and uh, name on top of that. Uh, next, let's talk about identity object. Uh, so an identity object is uh, it's used to identify recipients. You can identify recipients in many ways. The most common way to do it is to use an email, but you can also use uh, a telephone number or some other kind of unique identifier. So uh, there's also an option in case the uh, if you uh, you want the recipient to be private, uh, you can hash the uh, hash the uh, uh, text value and instead of uh, putting it in plain text, uh, you can put the hashed uh, salt and uh, yeah use that as uh, your identity object. Uh, so next we have evidence and alignment object. So an evidence is an object uh, that that will be linked to uh, to an assertion. So you can uh, yeah. So you can uh, get, attach a multiple evidence to each assertion and uh, basically. Uh, let's say it, uh, you have a badge to a badge that uh, for uh, making in a website. So an evidence might have uh, the link to that website or something like that. And you can obviously have multiple evidences of, attached to an uh, assertion. An alignment object is uh, a property of an, uh, a badge class. So this is basically uh, for uh, education standards. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the correct terminology, but uh, yeah. So if you want uh, to, uh, let's say, um, I can't really think of an example. <laughs> I should have prepared, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, you can uh, say, let's say uh, a particular badge badge aligns to uh, so a, speech, a speaking skill that is uh, approved by a university, then you can mention that here. Next, we'll talk. So yeah, uh, we talked about a lot of uh, structures till now. But even uh, even if you uh, couldn't, for, if you wanted to add something else other than that, you can use extensions on top of that. So an extension uh, is used to add additional metadata to badge objects and uh, you can define, uh, to use an extension, you have to define your own JSON-LD and uh, yeah, just put it in your at context and that way you can have your own uh, own structure of how you want to define the op uh, spe specification. And uh, yeah, you can also add validation to uh, this, uh, your own uh, extension and 
you can do that with JSON schema. And there's an example of how you do that right here. So yeah, this is the overall how uh, it, uh, I mean, how the whole operation goes. So you have host which stores and manages all the assertions, badges, profiles, and everything. And then you have displayer applications like uh, Badger UI, which will uh, display your applic uh, display all the uh, badges that you have earned, and also uh, sure you can also share them with people. You can also use the displayer to verify uh, the badges that you have gotten. Well, not you, but other people might want to verify that 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 the badge that you have gotten is legitimate. So you can use the displayer itself to verify that, and the displayer will just go to, go to the host and check if that badge is valid, and uh, yeah, let you know about that. So yeah, that's about verification. So one of the things that I was that I found interesting about badges was uh, I saw this YouTube video on uh, how you import a badge to Badger. And uh, the way you did that was you just dragged the image file and you just clicked or like imported it on the uh, drag and drop it on the application. And it was kind of like magic for me because I didn't really understand, okay, how did it get the metadata? So that, uh, you do that with badge baking. So uh, you can, uh, so the only two uh, types that support badge baking is PNGs and SVGs. So uh, yeah, if, uh, in case of PNGs, you gotta uh, insert the uh, as uh, assertion metadata to ITXT chunk, and uh, in case of SVG, you can add uh, the XML open badges attribute with the value of uh, yeah, uh, open badges dot org, and then add the open badges uh, assertion tag with a verify attribute. So the verify attribute will be either the uh, it'll either be the the the, ba uh, the unique identifier of the badge or the salt not the salt yeah I think that's uh, it you ca you cannot use anything other than that so this is what uh, uh, it would look like uh, in an SVG you can see that. Uh, uh, you you use open badges colon assertion and in the verify field you have to add uh, the uh, unique identifier in which case it's just a URL with uh, uh, ID attached at the end and here is where all our metadata lies. So uh, yeah, the so so far we were talking about version 2.0, but there's also version 2.1 uh, which is uh, in the candidate final stage. This basically defines the REST, uh, REST API part of it, and uh, it's called Badge Connect uh, API. So it defines the standard of the REST API that you should, that the application should use to be able to uh, have compatibility with other applications. Let's uh, and there are very various use cases that are written down here which this version will solve. So let's say a user wants to connect their assertion to a recruiting platform. They can use the, the recruiting uh, platform can just use the REST API of uh, Badge Connect and uh, then uh, import those badges and display it there. So yeah, let's, so let's talk about uh, Badger Server. So Badger Server is uh, the backend uh, that uh, Badger is using, and it's uh, based on uh, Django and Django REST framework. This uh, allows you, uh, so yeah, it has a very convenient documentation which allows you to see uh, what operations you can do on the server. And uh, uh, this, in fact, is actually a lot of it is, uh, I think, aligned with uh, the version 2.1 spec. Uh, it uh, the version 2.1 spec isn't out yet, so you can't say that. But uh, a lot of the AP, uh, endpoints that are already here uh, are ali aligning with the 2.1. So uh, yeah, this is what the UI uh, of Badger looks like. So this is the backpack, and uh, this is where you keep all the badges that you've earned, and uh, you can 
share them from here or view them. So this is what the detailed view looks like. You can see that uh, this is the issuer, which is uh, which is Fedora, and this is uh, who it's awarded to. So this is uh, the recipient. And uh, another feature that uh, Badger offers is to uh, you can have collections which uh, which are basically collection of uh, collections of badges that you can specifically tailor to your choice so you can share it to someone uh, uh, in the sense uh, let's say you want to have all your web development skills in one collection so you can uh, add it to your resume and share it with uh, your employer employers and uh, yeah, so there's also, you can also share it uh, right from there. Uh, this is what the collections look like. You can I, you can choose to make it public or private. So uh, yeah, let's talk about Fedora badges now. So uh, yeah, so this is the uh, outline of what Fedora badges currently looks like. We're using Thari for, uh, uh, as the application and uh, yeah. So, Tareed, uh, so uh, with Fedora badges, you automatically get uh, awarded uh, badges uh, with certain rules that are written. And uh, usually, uh, ideally, the uh, admin doesn't uh, ever have to touch the, uh, uh, doesn't have to ever award the badges manually. So, the way they uh, do that is by using Fed badges, so Fed badges is a, a consumer uh, and a, a consumer, a Fed message consumer, and it has rules uh, for various badges that can be awarded to the recipients. So Fedora, Fed message uh, is for people who are not familiar with Fedora. It's the uh, it's a hub for where all the events come in and. Uh, all the events that are performed by various users come in, and you can uh, and Fed badges checks uh, exactly all that, and uh, yeah, based on the rules, uh, it'll award you badges. There are also uh, you can also uh, do stuff from the admin, uh, like from this, uh, like sys admins can also award the badges or revoke badges manually with scripts that are uh, written. And then there's cron services, which for some badges, which uh, which depend on third-party applications, you can't uh, you have to use uh, uh, you can't uh, depend on Fed badges, and uh, yeah, you won't be receiving messages for that. So you gotta do that with a cron service. So uh, for the migration to Badger. Uh, uh, I've worked on several things. So one of the important ones is an SDK for communicating with Badger server. So we call this Badger client. And uh, this is, a, it's a simple a SDK that calls the various endpoints of Badger server. And uh, the benefit of using that uh, is, is that you can uh, have clean code and then also separate the, uh, well, basically, it's for plain code. Let's say that, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, the, so yeah, unit test was something that I did for the first time, and uh, yeah, I finally understood why people hate tests so much. But uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, on top of that, we also, uh, I also wrote some scripts to add issue and revoke badges, just like we saw in the previous architecture diagram. Uh, you can do the same with. Uh, the new uh, Badger application. And then uh, for deployment, where you're gonna use Kamini Shift. So that's why I've written OpenShift templates for that. And also uh, for a Badger server, I had to write a custom S2I builder, which, uh, which was really, uh, I mean, I, I didn't think it would be that hard. I had to try like three, four images, uh, but yeah, it finally worked in the end. Uh, we also have FAS authentication, obviously, so you can log in with your Fedora ID. And uh, the two major uh, tasks that are left is the migration of data. So this will be fairly easy, hopefully. Uh, 
because of Badger client. So you just got to read the uh, data from the Postgres database that uh, we have uh, that the read uses and uh, call the REST APIs uh, according to that. Uh, and uh, yeah, the other task that is left is the migration of Fed badges to Fedora messaging. So that's there, and uh, we also need to integrate it with Badger Client. So yeah, this is what the Badger Client looks like. So you can uh, import the, uh, it's a Python pa packet, so you can import it and then provide the password and the client ID and also the scope. And yeah, each, uh, the, it's a class-based uh, API. So you, you'll have classes for various objects that I just talked about in the beginning. And uh, you, can, uh, you can call the methods like get issuers, get issuer and uh, get badges right here and get the appropriate uh, objects back for it. So uh, one thing that uh, isn't, uh, uh, yeah, another thing that uh, we haven't, uh, that needs to be done right now is uh, leaderboards. Uh, Fedora, uh, I mean, Tarit uh, does have it, uh, also stat statistics, but uh, Badger doesn't have uh, either of those. Uh, and uh, yeah, we need to also work on uh, the leaderboards and statistics part of it. So yeah, the, that's it for uh, this session. Uh, I wasn't really prepared for that, so I started a lot, but uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you found something interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks for attending. I want to thank uh, my mentors, Sayan and Michael for guiding me with this migration and also the folks over at Badger because uh, uh, yeah, it's a it's a really uh, outstanding application, and I learned a lot from just looking at the code uh, of uh, Badger. And uh, yeah, if you're a uh, yeah, if you want to uh, check their website, uh, it's Badger.io. They also provide uh, pro memberships, not memberships, but yeah, subscriptions or whatever. And uh, you can yeah yeah go check them out. And yeah, thanks for attending.